Hi, I'm John Weeks, and this is the Standard's Tech and Science Daily Podcast. Coming up, how tourists are making Lake Windermere turn green. But first, Boeing's first ever astronaut launch has been delayed after a valve issue was spotted in the Atlas V rocket. Most likely exceeding the uh, the fall value. Uh, We do not have a path to proceed uh, uh, further at this point. Roger. So uh, at this point, your recommendation is to uh, secure operations for today? That is correct. The United Launch Alliance rocket was due to send two NASA astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, to the International Space Station inside Boeing's Starliner capsule, but it was called off just two hours before launch. The aerospace manufacturer's mission to send the Starliner capsule into space has been on hold for years due to issues with the capsule itself. NASA says the next attempted launch won't take place before Friday this week. Now, it's understood the Ministry of Defence has been the target of a large-scale data breach. The bank details of all serving armed forces personnel and some veterans have potentially been compromised after a third-party payroll system was hacked. When discovering the breach, the MOD immediately took the external network, operated by a contractor, offline. Sky News reported that China was behind the cyber attack, but ministers aren't expected to name the country behind the hacking. They're due to blame hostile and malign actors. A team of researchers using satellite images to record changes in Cumbria's Lake Windermere say that an influx in tourists could be turning the lake green. Map Impact have used the images in conjunction with anonymous smartphone data to spot the link between high tourist numbers and levels of blue-green algae in the lake. Too much of that algae can lead to reduced oxygen levels in the water, killing fish and aquatic life, and it's also harmful to humans. Map Impact says at specific times of the year, the number of people visiting the lake has reached more than 320,000, up to eight times the local population, and say that human waste can impact the lake. In their reports, they said human waste, as well as high temperatures and runoff from farms, can all impact the lake's ecosystem, and they're calling for stringent regulatory enforcement of the local wastewater treatment plants around the lake. In a bid to climate-proof our crops, scientists are examining ancient bacteria to see if they hold the secrets to surviving warming temperatures. Edinburgh's Heriot Watts University has been given half a million pounds to examine ancient soil samples extracted from deep below the Arctic. The samples are from the Paleolithic period, when the planet was warming in a similar way to how it is now. It's hoped they can determine whether this ancient DNA can help present-day bacteria support plants when water is scarce and effectively drought-proof barley, one of Scotland's biggest crops. Scientists at the University of Manchester say they're one step closer to making quantum computing a reality. Put simply, while classical computers do one calculation after another, quantum computers can do all the calculations at the same time, allowing them to process vast amounts of information and perform very complex calculations at an unrivaled speed. Well, teams at the University in Manchester, in collaboration with the University of Melbourne in Australia, have produced an enhanced, ultra-pure form of silicon they're calling the first brick needed to construct a silicon-based quantum computer. Scientists believe quantum computing could help us find solutions to complex issues, such as addressing the impact of climate change and tackling healthcare challenges. Coming up, how images are being manipulated in fake insurance claims, and Nintendo casually announces a Switch successor. Stay up to date with the latest tech and science news. Hit that follow button during the break. Welcome back. Scientists say they've identified a new genetic form of Alzheimer's disease that highlights the urgent need for new specialised treatments and prevention strategies. Researchers in the US said almost all of the people who carry two copies of the APOE4 gene variant, known as APOE4 homozygotes, are likely to develop signs of the neurological condition. They said this gene is already associated with a higher risk of developing Alzheimer's. But scientists now believe 95% of people who are over 65 and carry two copies of the gene show early signs of the disease, making it a distinct genetic form of Alzheimer's. 
Dr. Juan Fortea from the San Pau Research Institute in Barcelona said the findings are important because the APOE4 gene variant represents between 2% and 3% of the general population. Insurance companies say fake and manipulated images are being used in claims. Industry experts say some people are using new tech to try to make claims for incidents that may never have happened in the first place. They're warning that technology can now be used to falsify registration numbers, damage or supporting documents. And insurer Allianz recorded a 300% jump in incidents where apps were used to distort real-life images, videos and documents between 2021 and 22 and 2022 and 23. In one example, an Aviva investigator stopped a theft claim in its tracks following suspicions around an image of a watch valued at more than £20,000. They found an image online of an identical watch reading at the exact same time to the second and subsequently declined the claim. And finally, it looks like Nintendo has announced a Switch 2 is in the works. In a post on X, the game giant's president said they will make an announcement about the successor to Nintendo Switch within this fiscal year. The post said they'll be holding a Nintendo Direct event this June regarding the Nintendo Switch software lineup for late 2024, but there will be no mention of the Nintendo Switch successor during that presentation. In response, one ex-user described it as possibly the most casual way to announce the Switch 2 ever. You're up to date. Come back at four o'clock and search for The Standard Podcast for the latest news and analysis. We're back tomorrow afternoon at one. See you then.